Ah, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a game. <laughs> it's OFCRA. Every Thursday, coming on to you live at around 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, though the game usually starts at about 3.30, but I digress. We have Op4 as Soviets, Blue 4 as NATO. Let me go ahead and put that prediction up. Let's set it for 20 minutes uh, for this OFCRA match here. Let's see who will win. Uh, blue four. No. Yeah, no, that should be good. At least that's based off of what I see. And then there's that flag position there. But let's go ahead and put that up. All right, there's the prediction live. And we'll go ahead and have a look at everything. But I hope you're all doing okay. Hey, Drekov, how you doing? Op4 is going to be spawned in the bottom right, Blue 4 on the top left. There's multiple different PCs that need to be hacked. Uh, there is a bomb site, I believe, somewhere over yonder. And then you have a uh, bunker over here that NATO controls. Overall, that is the theme of today's operation. But otherwise, if you were to use the mission command, you would see the uh, topic. And... Well, let's go ahead and do a quick breakdown here, though. Uh, so we have the full write-up on the mission link. Uh, this is all being done on the German-Dutch border, apparently. But otherwise, let me go ahead and read off the general information. If the bomb is defused, the marker on the map will change to gray, but the mission isn't over yet because the Mato HQ will still be active in the cap. If the bomb will detonate, if not defused at the end of the mission, if the bomb is defused, it isn't over yet. NATO can still get a tie by holding the Nato HQ with the supremacy bonus. Only crews of the LAV me operates the LAV. If they get dismounted, they join a friendly squad. The code to defuse the bomb is a combination of the codes from PC1, PC2, and PC3. These need to be collected on the markers listed as PC1, 2, and 3 on the map. Collected codes will be added to the briefing tab on the map so anyone can access the information. To defuse the bomb, you don't need every piece of the code. It can be guessed. Uh, it, if the bomb is diffused, the marker on the map will change to gray. Okay, so same thing there. Uh, and then only the crew for Op 4 can operate the BTR-80. Uh, if it gets dismounted, they join up as infantry. Points-wise, if the bomb is not diffused, NATO gains 5 points. If the NATO HQ is held by NATO, they gain 3 points. And then Supremacy, uh, if Blue 4... This is an interesting change to the Supremacy bonus, because usually it's the opposite team having 5 or less people. But in this case, this is the newer version of the Supremacy bonus we've been seeing. If your team has 5 or more people left alive by the end of the round... Uh, you have, or excuse me, the match. Uh, there's no multiple rounds here. There's a bonus round, but I never covered that, but I digress. Uh, if you keep five of your guys or more alive by the end, uh, you will gain two points. Op 4 gets five points if the bomb's defused. NATO, uh, HQ, if that's captured, Op 4 gains three points. And then if they have the supremacy bonus, they gain two points as well. So, really, this is all circled around the bomb here so that's what we gotta put our focus on i'm gonna have some pretty casual music on for today i don't have anyone for the multi today unfortunately um i just didn't have anyone message me oh fcra for multi it's a little hit or miss i'm sure some people are streaming their perspectives but uh sometimes they just don't pass it on to me uh no limit on guesses no they can keep guessing so if they only get four out of the six numbers that they uh you know let's say they get two from pc1 two from pc2 but they can't get pc3 they can guess the last two but that would require them to have control of the bomb site itself and we'll see that when we get in so otherwise i hope you're all doing a-okay i'm gonna give it another minute or two before i go down the roster uh just because i've been seeing a lot of people try to reconnect to the server here this is going to be a 110 plus player match right now the server is on 111 or at least the team speak so I am going to type that into the channel, 110 plus player, lovely. Hmm. Oh, sorry, I was just letting uh, everything hit me. I'm building a computer right now. Uh, I've got the motherboard in, I've got the power unit in, CPU, RAM. Uh, I'm just building its heat sink right now on the cooler. Um, because of how it works, I can't top mount it, which most of my computers I've built, this is the fourth one I've ever built, by the way. Um, they've all been top mounted. This one I'm gonna have to front mount. <laughs> and the front being, uh, 
you know, I guess technically the side, that's also where uh, some of the power uh, connectors are for USB ports and whatnot for this build. But I have to do it a very specific way to get the uh, heat sink on. I guess you'd call it a radiator. I like to call it a heat sink. It makes me sound, it makes me feel better about it. But uh, then I have to do more wiring, get a few more parts in there. There's two graphics cards that I got to put in and make it work from there and then I have to flash the BIOS, uh, update it and then um, put the operating system on. Oh yeah, and I gotta put the solid state drive in too. So I'm having to have that done and ready to go by tomorrow. When I'll transfer over to, it'll be anytime next week when I feel like it. Uh, I'm just trying to clear out some storage space on my drives to um, then move the drives from my current computer to that computer because uh, that computer is like literally four times it was more powerful which, you know, then I'll get into VTOL VR and a few other things and the uh, Additional games I want to get into for, um, whatchamacallit, for, uh, you know, going into August and stuff. So we'll see how that goes. Otherwise, uh, both polls are down. I think I've given enough time here. So let's go ahead and go over the players on the sides here. So on op four, we have Dennis, Zicky, Zicky, who I would say is probably the top player with an OFCRA. We have Baku. Uh, Barricade, Ethan Price, Lewis, Nannard, Oliver, basically all of FAWR, uh, Donald, Barros, Ezio, Aja, Beast, Mafo, Sixor, TK Lama, uh, Rick Hunter being our first Blue 4 guy, Giovanni on Op 4, Abelay on Blue 4, Adriwi, uh, Alfmiel, and Ambrose on Op 4, Angel on Blue 4, Angio Mars and Anaru on Op 4, Ash, Baney, Black, Becher, uh, no, Breacher, excuse me, and Calc on Blue 4, Carlitos on Op 4, Blue 4 has Kerrigan White, Op 4 has Cheeseburger, uh, Kano. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, that, that caught my attention there for a second. Uh, Konjovic on Blue 4, we've got Bat, Fox, Rivardo, Lolo, Wonder, uh, Kazari, and Damix on Op4. Sorry if I'm butchering some of these names, by the way. OFCRA is a very heavily uh, multicultural community. There's French players, Czech players, Polish players, British players. I, I will never understand British. A few Americans in there too, some Aussies, whole nine yards. So some of these dialects I have trouble pronouncing because I'm just not used to speaking them. Uh, Dashkin on Blue 4, David AF on Op4, Dawid on Blue 4, uh, Dawido, Dawidox on Op4. Gosh, we're not even halfway through the roster. Devil Hero, Dislike, and Dream CZ on Blue 4. Dimas on Op 4. Flip for Flap and Fridge Salesman on Blue 4. Grubby on Op 4. Uh, Honduini. <laughs> Houndini. Houndini on uh, Blue 4. Ilbanak on Op 4. Ivan and Jonathan on Blue 4. Jose, Kafi, Kuwait, Lama. Um, we don't talk about that guy. He's kind of a jerk. Uh, Lakar 4 and Leziak on Op 4. Uh, Louis on Blue 4. Malgrim on Op 4. Mariz, Marty, Murdy, and Mix. Um, no. Miz, Mizik, I think, on Blue 4. Minos AI on Op 4. Mr. Nova on Blue 4. Monica on Op 4. Uh, Moose, Mr. White, and NASA on Blue 4. Navy Chan on Op 4. Nari, Nicker. I gotta be careful. I have to clarify with a CK in there because you never know. Uh, Nubas, uh, Boogie, Patriotic, and PHK on Blue 4. Pogo underscore Popsy and um, Macius on Op 4 there. Uh, Williams, Rigel, Rizbo, Roy DeCamper on Blue 4. Uh, Biali on Op 4. Weber on Blue 4. Settler on Op 4. Uh, Sir Magicosaurus on Blue 4 as well as Sky Online, Soda Wave, Stefan, Tackle, Teos, Tyr. Tenard, all on blue four. Terror on op four. Tess, Mr. Dave, and Thomas on blue four. Val on op four. Wombat on blue four. And Zint, Zeron, Yuru on op four. And then Zebra down there on blue four. What the hell is that? Let's, let me actually have a quick look here. We got Imperial logos. We've got hot dogs. We have some nice little white lotus things there. Don't even know what flower that is. I just, you know, die, die, die. That's cute with a rose. Project Eden. All right. Okay, Blue Fist, more Project Eating. I like the little uh, hawk right there. You got what appears to be, it's a little hard for me to tell, it's either a lion or a, I think it's a lion, could be wrong. One of those, you know, or a panther. Uh, <laughs> the louder you scream, the faster we come. Ah, the medics. Another White Lotus OFCRA logo, the Imperial logo, that's a new one. Uh, three stick grenades, interesting. More hot dogs, more die, die, die. <laughs> oh, there we go. We're getting pushed through. All right. 
go ahead and have a look at our AO here. So blue four all spawning on the flag. Eight minutes set to warm up. I'm going to page down a little bit just to help control my frames here. Hey, Tootie, how are you doing? That's the white rose of Yorkshire. Thanks, man. And uh, the red and white rose is the Tudor rose from the red rose and the Lancaster rose. Got it. Thank you for the clarifications, buddy. How are you doing? Um, you'll never understand us. Hey, no, I will not, Tootie. And crimson, red, oh, whoa. Finally caught a stream. Hope to see more stupid Arma fuck-ups all around. Can't wait. You might find a few in OFCRA. It's a little rare to find them. Uh, Pog, you will definitely see a few, though, so it should be uh, quite interesting. Who should we vote for? You know, if you've been here for a while, that any side I tell you to vote for is going to lose, so make up your own damn decisions. <laughs> Otherwise, Blue 4, we have what appears to be a British-backed faction. I see L85s down. I see Mazes. We've got some magnified optics for those L85s. We've got the machine gun version of it with the frontal bipod. I guess it's just classified as an LMG. But we also have some GPMGs in play. And we also have some 203 systems on the bottom there. I'm looking for any other additional weaponry. They might have multi-faction, though. So that's the British faction for themselves. Because uh, last time we saw a Soviet versus NATO fight, which was the first BIA op where we had like 150 players on the server. Actually, I think it was 140. We saw multiple different factions. So... Uh, Someone can remind me what flag that is. I want it. It's not French. <laughs> but they've got FNFALs uh, with some scopes on them. We got some M16A2s, maybe A3s from the looks of things. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, no. It's the Netherlands. Oh, balls. Well, guys, that's not a good start. Hmm. Yeah, last week there was some crashing issues. It looks like it happened again this week. Could just be a one and done. I'm going to quickly get back on the server. Uh, I would like to not see a repeat of last week because then they're going to ask me to go back to stream delays uh, or just recording. But, I mean, I think it's just an overall network thing. Let me try a quick reconnect to the server because it could have been my connection. That has happened one time in OFCRA is uh, my connection just crashes out for some weird reason. Uh, but I don't see their server up right now. That's not a good sign. Hmm. All right, well, we're in a little bit of a... Wait, wait, no. Was that it? Right there? One second. I might have hit the refresh button a bit too quick. No, that's a different server. Okay. Wah, wah, wah. All right, well, I'll have a quick fix on it, and we'll see how things go go but otherwise i guess i'll take the opportunity to go and talk about the other things we're going to be doing, uh, doing today seven o'clock which is in roughly three and a half hours we will be covering pog and then i'm going to try to um work on tmtm in the evening at 10 p.m now it's getting sus yeah as you i know it's a bit strange but we'll see how things go Well, I'll be on standby here on my phone, so we'll see how things go. And I'm going to see if I get any other orders here, because this might just turn into a recording stream, but we'll see. NASA will tell me what to do. Otherwise, uh, what does Page Down do? You know, that's a really good question. As you, I want to watch you guys play too, but, you know, it is kind of weird that everything just decided to fall flat on its face immediately, so we'll see. I'm just relaxing. I'm going to try to play TMTM tonight, yeah. Um, I am in the process of building a computer right now uh, and doing a lot of uh, software, not software, um, just file transferring on YouTube and whatnot. Uh, another note that I was just given is, um, so there's a, there's a big thing going on with Friday Night Fights uh, right now because they want to try to privatize their NA branch and it is up in the air right now whether or not they're going to allow streaming in that privatized branch under NA. I personally have no idea what they're going to do. I also know the NA branch in the past has thrown me to the wolves on a fucking whim. So I'm not really expecting anything from them. Just the fact that this is going down this way. I feel like we might not be able to cover the NA branch because of some of the BS that they've been doing. Um... 
Which, that's a lie. I kind of, I do appreciate what they're going for. I just don't agree with how they're executing it. But that's just my personal opinion. Um, but what they're trying to do is basically make the NA branch invite only, and they only want to allow Milsim communities and stuff to play because uh, they want a more serious atmosphere. But a lot of the casual communities are better than the Milsim communities, and they like playing NA. So this has obviously caused a lot of uh, friction. So... I'm, I'm staying independent about it, Spikey, personally. I know that, you know, a lot of people are mad about it. Um, but it is up in the air right now whether or not they're going to allow me to stream it in the future. Uh, because this change occurs past the 22nd of September or something. So, like, in one to two months. Um, so, what I'm thinking of doing is just going head first into VTOL VR. Because they gave me an offer to stream their major leagues. I just wanted to upgrade my computer first. Um and then kind of go from there, you know? So there's a very high likelihood. It's September 1st when the change is happening. Okay, yeah, so we have a month. But like I was saying, there's a very li high likelihood that they're just going to throw me to the wolves because they've already done that in the past. Um, and then I'm not sure if I'll continue streaming Friday night fights beyond that. Um because if they throw me to the wolves in NA, that's going to show me that they don't really care about me or what I do. So what I'll do at that point is... Because here's here's the thing. Uh, the Shenanigans channel, which is the PvP thing right now, it's front logged to four months right now. Um, I don't really need it. Like, that's something that I provide because I like doing it, and I know a lot of people like watching it, but it's mainly for the people that, you know, want to watch themselves from my POV after they play it back. So, it only also makes, like, 150 bucks a month. So, for all of the, like, how would I put it? It is literally responsible to, I want to say, a third to half of my editing time for literally, like... Oh, at best like a 20th to 50th of my revenue depending on the month like it's it's not really worth anything to me i just do it because i feel like it's a good service to do for a lot of people that part like you know enjoy it uh and there were some expansions i want to do with fnf but all these little things have been coming up which has shown me that you know anything i do probably won't be worth it in the end but you know there's also the thing of i don't want to be part of all right the service backup so let's go ahead and jump into that uh, I'm going to also nullify the prediction for a moment. Um, just because I'm going to redo it in a second. Also, Crimson Red, oh, well, thanks so much for the um, Twitch Prime sub. I hope you keep enjoying the operations. I do hope you get a nice Send kick out of the scenario. Team 6 now. So... That channel is probably still going to exist because I'm going to keep covering OFCRA because I love OFCRA. Um, I'm going to try my best to cover ESM events as well. I appreciate it, Red. Hope you keep enjoying everything. Uh, and then, you know, VTOL VR, I'll be covering that too. So FNF is right now really... Oh my God, did you see that? All those people just came in at once. God, that is literally how you need us your own server with all those network connections jumping in. Good God. But... With everything being up in the air, that channel is probably going to be less and less worth it uh, for everyone around. I'm just going to be uploading as we do things because eventually that front log of four months will run out. Uh, even with the freaking estimated 60 to 70 uh, compilations I have to make. So... I don't know, probably by, I want to say 2023, with the rate of how everything's going, that channel might drastically change just to have stuff less, um, you know, less content to do. Because the only other two options I can think of is Coalition or uh, AFI, and Coalition only does like a CCO every month. Uh, and then AFI, I think, only does one thing every few months, as uh, every month as well, so... You know, for something to have a weekly output, I would have to look elsewhere. And I'm also going to be honest, I don't really feel like it. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's cool. It's fun. I'll take any opportunity that's given to me, but it's not worth it for me to keep it going. Um, and it's not my main bread and butter, so I just don't really care. 
you know, and if I get my Fridays back, then we can have another Arma op. You know what I mean? Like, there's actually a lot of other things that we can do uh, with that time. So, if they want to torpedo themselves, by all means, but I will also say this. I don't mean to toot my own horn here, but having a YouTuber is how a lot of places grow these days. And once you kick the boot on the YouTuber, you better have a damn good way to keep growing. Because otherwise, over the course of a few months, you will start hemorrhaging people. But hey, I'm not here to throw my weight around. I'm just here to have fun and serve the people that are having fun playing. So I'm just here to show you guys some good content and give something for people to watch in the future. So, so no more F and F in the YouTube on the future. Uh, Drekov, that what I'm saying is I don't know. Uh, cause they could say, Hey, we do want you to continue casting it and I'll go, cool. I'll continue casting it. Uh, but if they shut the door on me, I'll cover EU for a while. Um, but if I start really disagreeing with what they do on top of the NA branch, because how the plan is going to end up being is through my channel. That's one of the ways that people are going to discover FNF. And if I find that they're just being treated like pieces of shit, I don't want to support that. That's kind of also why I broke ties with Coalition, because they were doing some stuff that I didn't really support. And I'm going to leave it at that. Look, I, I have really simple rules, guys. Just don't be assholes to each other. And I don't really give a shit what you do with your own community. Just don't be a dick. Don't encourage other people to be a dick. Don't <laughs> don't try to side hustle Send your communities at funerals. <laughs> no. Don't but, uh, target people for a this for their beliefs and don't fucking I just there's so many fucking things that have happened in my career, which I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Like, what is wrong with you? But we're on the internet. So naturally, there's going to be a lot of stupid people. Yeah. Yeah. It's... It's a time, guys. All right. So side note on the funeral. Um, 501st. So one of the uh, original swap developers. You guys remember swap, right? You know, the original big Star Wars mod. Um, Val Mork, who was one of the main developers of that team, died. And um, the Star Sims decided, hey, let's have an in-game funeral, which I thought at the time was a little cringy. And I still think it's a little cringy. But hey, it's a lot of people coming together to appreciate someone's work because without them, None of that would be possible. Yeah, uh, Sorensic and his buddies in the 501st decided to uh, turn it into a recruitment drive to the 501st and um, tried to show the 501st off in the middle of a dead developer's funeral. It was it was interesting. Now, if you ask him about it, he just kind of waves it off and dismisses it, but he, he knows what he did was fucked up. And that's why I didn't talk to him for a few years, but I work with him now here and again. Because eventually I let everything pass, but but good fucking god, you know the things I've had to deal with in uh, <laughs> being a fucking YouTuber here, man. You'd be fucking surprised. All right, you would be surprised. Let's go ahead and put that prediction back up. We are here to watch commentary, baby. And let's see it going. And granted, guys, this was back in, like, 2018. That was four years ago. To me, it doesn't matter at this point. Uh, I usually don't hold a grudge uh, for more than two and a half years because that was the longest grudge I ever held in Arma 3. Uh, and that's another story that has to do with, the, uh, well, not the 501st, a specific person in the 501st um, who ruined one of my nights and also made me retire from that community. So when I found him two and a half years later in another community, I ruined his night. And it was fun. Ilbenek, I trust your plan completely. Let's see how things go. Uh, Ilbenek, what, are, uh, what side are you commanding? Blue 4 or Op 4? Also, betting is back up. Feel free to replace your bets. Sorry that I uh, sped that up a little bit. Oh, shit. Ilbenek, say your piece and go. Because I have to now say anyone who is playing live, you know the deal. Once the uh, we get into this interface, I need to kick you out. Following my hydrate there. 50k on op 4. Gotcha. Bye. Good luck, buddy. 
All right, so real quick, flip for flap is going to be commanding blue four, Ilbanek commanding op four. Great. Let's see how this goes. Blue four, we're already talking about their weaponry. They have British base kits of uh, L85s, uh, GPMGs, some Mazes in play. It's like there's a slight bit of rubber banding here, but it's uh, mostly stabilizing here. Let's hope that uh, thing doesn't happen again. We got Norwegian kits as well, so we're seeing M16A3s, FNFALs, mini mes. Uh, which, you know, your standard 249s is another term for it. And we'll see how all of this goes. Otherwise, we also have some German forces here with G3s, MG3s, which I would assume they're MG3s. Uh, and otherwise, I don't really see anything else. We do see some uh, G3s with marksman scopes in terms of those ACOGs. But otherwise, that should be it. So British, Netherlands, and Germans. Really interesting combo there. You see some other guys kidding out over yonder as well. We've got multiple transport cars, some transport trucks with some turnout seats. Uh, we got two M113 transports with 50 cals. Make that four, and then you have your LAV with an auto cannon. That's right, folks. We're going to have some auto cannon PvP tonight as long as the server doesn't die again. Uh, otherwise, looking over at the Op4 side, let's see what they're fielding in today. We have what appears to be some AK-74s all around, some PKMs. Seeing a little bit of rubber banding. We've got some SVD Dragonovs in play. Some slight magnified optics for the squad leaders. I've seen that on both sides, actually. But it looks like these guys are purely AK-74s all around. No diversification. That is fine. Multiple transport euros, a command car back here. We have four BTR-80s in play and two BTR-80 alphas. Two auto cannons to one. Uh, the millimeter of the auto cannon, I believe, is uh, 20. I believe it's 20 for both, but you could fact check me. But both of the the millimeter of the auto cannon doesn't really matter. For this match, they're not fighting anything bigger than, you know, APCs or, um, I guess you could technically call them IFVs as well because of those auto cannons, but they're all APCs. Because the LAV can carry people as well. But otherwise, that should be it for the operation. The reason Op4 gets two is because they are the attacking faction here. Again, the premises of this match is that the Op4 attacking faction needs to access three computers. At every computer, they will get a bit of code. And that code will help them find, and oh, it's not find, excuse me, defuse a bomb, which I believe is located. Is it located over here? I actually don't know where the bomb is. Uh, it might be. We gotta find it. It might be actually be in this uh, position right here. Yeah. So this is where uh, the bomb is being defused. Is that the dude riding the damn bomb from that one movie? That's cute. So uh, this flag will change gray if it is defused, and then whoever has control of this position by the end of the round will win. Otherwise, the second laptop is located over here on the exact marker, which will be this house. It's somewhere in here. First floor, maybe. There it is. It looks like they have a fun little custom picture for every uh, computer in terms of what I've seen. And then the third one is in this little uh, military complex here, probably in one of these tents. Okay, nope, it's on the table out here with a little Scud missile on it. So, uh, Blue 4 is going to be defending, Op 4 is going to be attacking. Let's see what the number advantage looks like. Blue 4 on the full roster page has down to half of this team and these two groups in addition. Op4 from the top of the roster has... Oh god, actually there's a lot of forts right there. One second. So, Zindika... They have an additional one, two, three, four, five groups. Send in GOAT Team 6. So, Op4 now. does have a distinct numbers advantage here because they are the attacking faction. Excuse me. BTR-80 Alpha is actually 30 millimeter. Yeah, so they're they're big cannons, guys. We'll see how things break down. Op4 has more offensive capability. So we'll just have to see how everything goes. Feel free to place your bets. Ilbanek again is commanding Op4. Blue4 is being commanded by Flip for Flap. Drunk Firebear, thanks so much for the nine-month resub. I hope you keep enjoying the operations, and I hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario.
So it's actually really funny when I do these streams because um, you might have noticed on the Vodge channel, I built a uh, an indoor greenhouse. Uh, that's actually the second unit I built. I have two different units here. Uh, right now, I'm actually using them to grow the following. Uh, dandelions, because dandelion greens are actually a really great thing to put on salad. It's something I'm experimenting with and they grow quick. Uh, but dandelions, peas, broccoli, green onion, tomatoes, and three different variants of pepper, being bell pepper, uh, like this dwarf pepper. I don't know the exact variant, but it's a small one. Uh, it's tastes pretty much the same as a bell pepper, but has a sweetness at the end that I find really appealing. And jalapeno uh, is the third one. So um, that's growing for now. I'm going to add a few other things. I've got some strawberry seeds about halfway through the three weeks of them be needing to be frozen to then move them. Uh, and then I've also got some lemons um, that are going to probably take another five days to sprout, but I have them in an egg carton right now and there. But um, I want to expand with some apples and some figs too, because one of the greenhouses I want to turn into a uh, all year greenhouse for tree saplings. And then the other one is going to be for vegetables. So uh, why that relates is at 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. every weekday, uh, is the most expensive time for electricity. Uh, the rate pretty much doubles per kilowatt hour. So I turn the greenhouses off for that three hour period just to give them a bit of a break because uh, you do need to um, let your plants breathe for a few hours. There's something they produce when it's dark. Um, I forget the exact chemical, but most plants do it. So they need that. So I use that time as a break. Uh, and then starting, I believe October or November uh, or something, there's two three-hour periods where electricity is double the normal rate, so I'll be turning it off for two uh, periods, so they'll still have 18 hours of light. How much AT do they have? Uh, you know, Blue 4, they have a lot of mazes. Let's go ahead and look at Op 4 real quick. Op 4, I believe, had a lot of RPGs with them. At least one per squad, so... I believe every every squad has uh, mat capability, but I also do see some lat capability. Mat being medium anti-tank, lat, we're seeing some RPGs down, uh, or at least 26s. Blue 4, I actually didn't see any lat capability here. Let me go ahead and have another look real quick, but... Okay, no, we do see some AT4s down in play. All right, mission has started. You're seeing Blue Force starting to mount up. I am seeing some uh, desync continue on the server, though it's gradual. I think it's because the server's just having uh, a hard time handling all of this, you know? So you've got some forces now deploying on the Blue Force side. They're still mounting everyone up. They really need to make sure they space everything out. Otherwise, it's going to get a little bit messy in the desync because, uh, you know, vehicles are going to ram into each other. Otherwise, you have Op4 mobilizing as well. And hopefully in a moment, we'll start to see on the map where all the groups are going. Betting is still live. The pool is past 250,000 points. Nice. And we'll see how all of this goes. Oh, they've already uh, managed to flip a BTR. Well, that's not good. Come on, guys. They have an unflip script, but they need a certain amount of people to uh, make it work. Yeah, it didn't really like that, did it? Come on, guys. Flip it. I like to watch these because sometimes they spontaneously explode and kill everyone, and uh, I find it hilarious. There we go. Up. Oh, mm, wait. Nope. One more. Oh. Yeah, I want to be careful that it doesn't roll back and crush you. But what about the AI back here? I'm sure they'll be safe, right? Let's go, guys. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, it cost two Soviet lives, but they flipped the BTR. Now that is a new record. Usually it takes four or five, but hey, we got somewhere, right? Oh, man. What a great start. What a great freaking start. Yeah, they're dead. Anyway. <laughs> 
Looking at the map here, we have Op4. By the way, the full map is open, so that means the uh, any side can go pretty much anywhere except to the edges of the map itself. Blue 4 already committing quite a few forces to uh, the first site. We have a group going off-road on the far eastern flank, and we got more forces coming down to the south. They might forego PC3 uh, just to hold 1 and 2 for now. Not leaving a lot of room on the rear for back capping, though, so they got to be careful. Otherwise, we see Op4 doing a pretty far deployment here with some groups going past others. So we're just going to see both sides throwing a lot of forces in a lot of different positions. Now, got to be careful when you're on the defense when you're doing stuff like this because Op4 have a lot more forces to work with here. They have an additional four and a half groups compared to two fours, uh, two and a half. And I'm basing that metric off of uh, what I like to call the full page. So this is an even measurement. And then you just calculate how many people you have past that page. So you have two additional groups, and then you have the second half. And again, we have Op4, so this is their full page. And then Zenadia is the cutoff point. So they have that half. And then one, two, three, four, five, excuse me, five additional groups. So that is where you see that number advantage and just the size of the amount of forces there in the first place. Looks like Op4, though, are actually, yeah, so the BTRs went a little too far. So you have this massive group now coming around and then some side forces on the left as well. All right. Ah, oh, man. There's not a lot going on right now. They hear Yuri and John and no. I know. So I believe this is Ilvanek right here. He's just going to be chilling as he uh, pushes the orders. Now, he, uh, he made a poll asking everyone in uh, OFCRA whether or not uh, people believed he made a competent, smart battle plan Sending or if he was just listening to, like, Hell's now. March or the Kosiak theme, or Kosiak theme, excuse me, uh, while making the plan, which means he's just going to throw the Soviets in and see what happens, which would be, you know, very historical of him anyway, but we'll just have to see how all that goes. Anyway, Drunk Fire Bear, thanks for giving Spike your RPA sub. I hope you both keep doing the operations, and I do hope you get a nice kick out of this OFCRA PvP match. But Blue 4 seem really content about holding uh, site number one. They're sending a lot of forces around site number two towards the south, but not on the site specifically. Uh, this large Op 4 group is really concerning, though, because that might bypass a lot. Uh, if he wanted to hit PC1, he probably would just sent the forces directly there. There's a few roads he could have taken. Uh, took, uh, took just to uh, get to Odson our artisan to uh, get to PC1, but instead he's doing this wide, elaborate flank, which to me makes it look like he's going to do something like this to stay on the MSRs and just bypass everything. So, got to remember, OFC area matches are divided into 90-minute uh, rounds, um, even though there's only one round and then usually a bonus round at the uh, after part, but... You know, that's another thing I could do because they also do stuff on Tuesdays and they have bonus rounds. I could just do those and, you know, V12VR uh, V and that should help cover uh, FNF's losses should there be any. But I digress. With it being a 90-minute round, I like to divide it into three 30-minute segments. Yes, this is One Life. Uh, where we have the early game, which is the first 30 minutes. Uh, usually you see a lot of maneuvering done at that point. Sometimes on the smaller maps, you also get your uh, first bouts of PvP. Uh, mid game where a lot of the PvP is settled and you start seeing a decisive uh, victor emerge and then late game where we see all those lovely clutches or that nasty cleanup that happens after one side gets its ass kicked. So with this being a large open map, we're probably going to see a lot more time put in early game. You got to remember, though, uh, eight minutes were used for a safe now. start. So you got to keep that in mind. The uh, dividers of those rounds are going to be at the 38 mark, the hour and eight mark, and the hour 38 mark when the round officially ends. So we'll just have to see how everything goes up to that point. Delta 6, thanks for the nine-month resub. I hope you keep enjoying the operations, my friend, and I hope you got a nice kick out of this scenario. Now, the prediction has ended, so can someone please read me the final numbers? I'm really curious to see which uh, side you guys favored and why, and try to give my two cents on why you are probably right or probably wrong for doing it. If one of you would be so kind to provide those numbers, because it's hard for me to uh, tab out and get them, because OBS doesn't like to display them for me. Blue 4 at 70%, Op 4 on 30%. What was the total pot number? But you guys favoring Blue 4? I can see why, but 
it's it's a tough call otherwise, but hold on. Might have our first bit of action here. As we have a lone BTR with only six people in it. Starting to come up this MSR. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there was a blue four guy immediately on that road, and these guys spotted it, so now they're trying to move away on the left side. Good call there. Unfortunate to blue four there. That would have been a really good ambushing spot. But now op four is going to drive around that, knowing it's blue four controlled, uh, and they want to stay away from that potential ambush. So that is very unfortunate for blue four to have that bit of a blunder. I think they, the Vic was too far away for them to notice, but otherwise it was just not the best thing to do timing wise i doubt you're going to see that vic dismount because where there's one guy dismounted uh, there's probably more so it might be tough for them to go and get that done is the screen frozen no it is not uh refresh your page that might be a uh internet issue on your side blue four dude betting 111k good god one of you is really into it but yeah blue four on nearly 200,000 points up for at around 85,000. I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to decisively say which faction I prefer because almost every time I do that, that faction loses and I don't want to jinx them. But we'll see how that thing goes. But another thing you got to consider, which I didn't even point out because I completely forgot, Roche has a lot of rivers in it. The BTRs are amphibious. The only, um, actually no, uh, the blue four 113s and the LAV are also amphibious. Uh, but for the attacking faction that needs to be more mobile... That is going to work in Op 4's advantage a lot more because they can use that to pretty much cross and transport anywhere they need to, which uh, decreases the likelihood that Blue 4 is going to run into uh, an ambushable thingamajig. Oh, it happens, sign, uh, internet latency and whatnot. Sometimes wires get crossed. Hard for uh, things to get uh, set there. You got the points to throw out right Oh, Michael. I hope it doesn't come back to bite you in the ass. Yeah, so Op4 really doing a strong arm, weak arm attack here. To explain that, uh, usually it is a pincer maneuver, but one side of the pincer is a lot stronger than the other. However, this is just going to boil down to two separate Sending attacks with a smaller six. group, I guess, harassing no. on the south and the main hey, large Lero, group on the been north. the streams, keep it up. How it goof. I uh, know how it goosh. Uh, <laughs> how it go. That's what I'm going to say because I don't know what to do with those last few letters. I'm sorry that I keep making that mistake. Thanks so much for the seven month reset nonetheless. I hope you keep doing the operations. And I do hope you get a nice kick out of this OFCRA match. I'm just having a look real quick. This team has dismounted off on the side. I think they're the forward element for all these other vehicles coming in, but I'm pretty sure they're just going to ride the MSR all the way around and try to back cap. Uh, just to put it a garrison on that position and then just hit things from the rear, which will completely bypass all blue force stuff. But again, it's going to take a lot of time to get all that maneuvering done. More points for other people? <laughs> right on, Michael. It's good philosophy. Because at the end, these points will only cause me suffering. Also, give it a month or two. Uh, I will finally go forward with that exercise cam. Because I'll finally have the self confidence to put that on camera. Admittedly. All right, so we've got Op4 stopping right here. This is definitely going to be one of their staging points. They're just going to dismount and check around, make sure they're not going to get ambushed. And that's just going to stall the clock a little bit. What's the R&R &R situation? I don't think there's any rearm and repair. I'm... I don't think there's ever been uh, Triple R in OFCRA now that I think about it. There might have been one time or twice, but usually the ammo that they go into the scenario with is the ammo they have permanently. Also, GOAT, here's what I can do. Ah, uh, yes, in the mailbox. Uh, expect those to come back one day. I've just been trying to find the time. But with how everything's going... That time will be soon. You'd be surprised what a flooded carpet will uh, delay you with. <laughs> My god. Um, there is no chat delay right now. Um, if I ever do have a chat delay, I usually put that uh, command up. So we'll see how things go. Also, that was um, 
No, that wasn't a stream delay. That was a physical chat delay because of another thing that was going on with Twitch that is now a defunct command. My bad. And then the multi, there's no one on the multi right now, so. All right, Oblimi, it's it's fixed. Now I'm just catching up with everything that I uh, had to go over. Did I want dragon dildos? I mean, I guess we should do a stream one day showing them all off, should we? But that's for another time. All right, so we got uh, Op 4 coming up. That's Ilvanek as command just driving up this area here. We just had a grenade go off. I think that was a miss throw by one of the people over there. Uh, yeah, Op 4 just going to completely bypass NATO. Now, they do need to get to the PC positions to get parts of the code because they'll at least need two before they can guess the other two digits. So I'm just really concerned with Op 4's plan. I find it a little ingenious, though, that they're going to completely outflank everything. But we'll see how things go. And you got this group back here that's uh, holding. It's just early game is usually a little slow with these larger maps because you have to do all this maneuvering and whatnot. It can take some time. But, you know, it gives us more time to chat about random stuff. How long is their column? Uh, about seven vehicles, I think. Yeah, three, six, yeah, seven worth. But you're going to start seeing them divert in different angles here. I also want to look real quick. Both of the 80 alphas are up here because there's a bit more of a darkened texture on these uh, boxes here. No, I stand corrected. It's a lighter texture that has it. Okay. I thought it would be the darker one. Uh, it's really hard to tell. You might not be able to sell it because of the pixelation, but there's like a, a dark black circle in the middle of that texture. And then this one that's a little lighter on the uh, rear half of the circle. And also the line isn't as dark, which would make me think that would distinguish a bigger cannon. But yeah, no, so the other 80 alpha's over here then. Which goes to show that they do have plans for this group, but yeah, Op4 is just doing a lot of bypasses here to get to every position they can think of. So yeah, they're not going to do the railway, uh, railway bridge. They're probably just going to cross it somewhere up random here or go up even further north and get that done. Now, this is the border between uh, Dutch and somewhere else. I forget. I think it might be Germany, but we'll see where all that's walled off from. Oh, quote 34. Yeah, that's from a while ago. Oh, all those quotes are from at least three plus years ago. I stopped doing quotes. Um just because it ran out of uh, room for it. But yeah, it's it's a long time ago. Went to the local farmer's market today, talked to some people selling greens about growing plants in a terrarium. You can grow plants in anything as long as you have a regulated temperature and you uh, keep them fertilized. Uh, if you need your plants to go dormant though, because it gets colder, then you cut the fertilizer and you just let them go dormant. Yeah, no, they're really, they're just outright riding the map border here. That makes me think they're going to totally go for the NATO bunker and then just back cap everything. I haven't seen an OFCRA back cap before, so I'll be really curious to see how that works. And then what these other two teams over here are for. Maybe as a distraction, once Blue Force starts pulling back, they can swoop in and hit those positions. But just going to make for a rather slow match. I'm also debating maybe tomorrow morning I'll stream just showing you guys what the new PC is and then show you guys what's in the uh, in greenhouse unit number two and then bring things out from greenhouse unit number one to show you because I can't bring my camera in there otherwise it breaks. But someone sent me uh, a link to uh, an app that'll help me calibrate the uh, streaming but I don't think that's going to help anything because it's just a matter of the connection getting uh, severed. So... We'll see. More stuff I'm trying to expand on. Should also do another stream where we cook something. Which will probably be peanut butter cookies next week. Because uh, Bloodwing has requested some. Alright, Op 4 have crossed the border. Nothing bad has happened. So I think that's just for show. And then you have these Vex following suit. So my question is, when does Flip for Flap know that it's too quiet? When does he understand that Op4 has gone for this massive flank around 
and he makes a call for everyone to pull back. Large scale cooking operations. I don't have a lot of people to cook for though in that sense. I'm dead and my ghost is streaming. Oh boy. One second. Alright, well, Twitch didn't send me anything. Let me just check the stream quality real quick. Just to make sure. Nah, it's still going. That's weird. I think Twitch is having a day. Huh. Oh, you're talking about a command. I see what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I will say, over the past few years, there have been periods where Twitch will just, you know, with some of their third party, or even Twitch itself, will just be weird. Um... So I think it's just, you know, connections get cut or whatnot. So my bad. I thought I thought you were saying this, uh, the channel was offline. I'm like, oh, okay. Wonder what happened there. So look at this. Op 4 is literally just constantly hugging this damn border. I, I can only assume they're going for back caps here. And then they're just going to guess the code for the bomb defusal. <laughs> So this is interesting, though. You got Blue 4 repositioning some forces over here. They're trying to look for this Op 4 group. So we'll have to see how things go over there. But I'm curious if they're going to then go north or if they're going to cut south. Because this is... This is one of the auto cannon picks, too. So if they get caught in route, uh, these two cars are going to get absolutely torn to shreds. Really weird calls here. Yeah, some form of distraction for a PSYOP. Yeah, who the hell knows? One second. So I think, yeah, those Vicks, they do have the maneuverability past these two um, because that's a Euro and that's an 80 Alpha. So they're pulling back. Looks like they're not gonna, they might take a left up here just to check the uh, other bridge locations and see if they catch something. And it looks like he is making that left turn. So maybe they're gonna try to like guard this choke point here thinking that Op Force flanking around. Because uh, now this is showing me that Blue Force trying to look for where Op 4 is coming in on. Because they should have taken contact or at least seen something by now. But they uh, also did spot that BTR-80 down towards the south that then moved around that Blue 4 ambush site. So that shows me that Blue 4 is trying to find where Op 4 is going. So we see some dismounts right here. These guys pushing around. They might be going for PC position three, but I think they're also trying to see if there's any internal stuff over here. I'm willing to bet you though, these guys are just here waiting for these guys to do reconnaissance so they can rush in and take control of the rear areas. That's what I would be expecting at this point. 
But if these guys don't stop and they're just checking the back roads, will they run into the stuff over here? Because if they don't set up a blocking position, then this force is going to continue to basically move along this left side and then cross where Op4 already has a defensive unit set up. So that should be really interesting if those cars decide to come up on that route. But they're taking a left here, which shows me they might cut through on this angle, which might catch that BTR off guard. But if they do a far left turn, and who knows? How far away can the vehicles be heard? Honestly, the, um... You can very faintly hear it right now. It's hard to hear it over the wind in the vehicles, but you can hear them. And that's a good 600 meters at most. But when you're in a vehicle, you're only going to hear your vehicle's engine. You're not going to hear an enemy's engine. So you got to be careful about that. Now, Blue Four has decided to move on this crossroad here and set up an ambush. That's not going to give them eyes on over there. But if they've cut their engines, they might hear those vehicles move by. So it's really, really tough to call. Hey, right over, Rex Ninja. I hope you keep enjoying everything, man. Um, the MTF op yesterday went really swell. Um, it could definitely have been expanded on in the uh, expanded on further, which is what I was going for. Uh, but I wanted this all to be a test run, so now that I know that they like it, we can expand on it going forward. And we will have a Starship Trooper thing this weekend as well. Um, and then we have to take the Saturday off because of something else, and then we'll finish that campaign with the final two missions. Hopefully. And then we'll probably expand it to Mobile Task Force stuff on Saturdays. Until the player base decides it wants something else to do. Yeah, so I legitimately think... These guys are waiting for this rear group to come in so they can do reconnaissance and then give the okay for this large group to rush in. But we're about to enter mid-game with not a single firefight happening, and that's really rare. So I'm really wondering what Flip for Flap is going to think after that. But in the meantime... Here, I'm going to tab out actually and pause my music for just a second because hearing these vehicles is critical. As I say that, we heard a Vic, but that was just them cutting the engine or something. This is about a kilometer away. They're remounting. That's just bad luck. Oh, man. All right, let me tap back up, put the music back on. They're now not going to be able to hear the vehicles driving by. Yeah, you can definitely hear it at about this range, especially over the music. So, yeah, a good 500, 600 meters, as I said. That was like a kilometer, though, so unlikely, but... Oh, boy. Blue Four is in a bit of a pickle here because there's just so many of them out of position. This is Cold War period, like 1980s, I want to say. So I don't think drones are... I think there were a few drones being developed, but they're not being utilized in this scenario. You once in a while see a drone in uh, OFCRA, though. Uh, the two I remember is uh, Falcon Drone and Helicopter Drone, which actually I think is the Falcon Drone. So um, I've seen Darters and I've seen uh, the Helicopter Falcon Drone. And there was also a, a UGV with a gun, but it quickly blew up because it went too far from its owner and um, exploded. So these guys are being recalled which is going to give these guys clear reign to uh, continue to push up. So let me do a quick point breakdown based off of how this goes. If 
Blue 4 is able to hold PC1 and PC2. They're going to gain the 5 points for having the bomb go off. And they're going to... More than likely, I'm going to assume both sides are going to get their 2 points from the Supremacy bonus of having 5 or more people alive by the end of the round. Based off the fact that PvP has not started yet, it's going to start in mid-game, if it does. It, there's no way it's going to start in late game. I don't think that's going to be the case, but we'll see. Uh, Op4 will gain three points for holding the NATO base, and then their two for the Supremacy bonus. So right now, it looks like Blue4 is going to win, but that could still turn around. Because I don't think Blue4 was expecting this strategy here. Yeah, drones hadn't entered their true service till the Cold War ended, in my opinion. I do agree with that. Usually for reconnaissance in OFCRA, they send small teams ahead of the main force. Uh, in Blue Force case, they just fan their forces out as much as they can, but sometimes they get bypassed. It's just how it happens. But I will say, it is rare to see not a single bullet or firefight exchanged in early game, regardless of how big the AO is. Usually someone runs into something else. And we were in line to see that happen down in one of these southern towns, but they saw the Blue Four guys standing in the middle of the road, so the Op Four Vic just bypassed that town entirely. Uh, Ilmes, so this will last for another, roughly another hour. Uh, Pog will probably be another 90 minutes to two hours, then TMTM will hopefully be around the two hour mark. Uh, if not less. Usually it's around that hour and a half to two hour mark. Yep, so now you're seeing that Op 4 rush on this position. They're literally going to rush right in. So another thing is, I think Ilbenex banking that Blue 4 Command is in the NATO area. So he can immediately decapitate Command. He's not going to get that, though, but that is a very OFCRA thing to do, is at the final objective, you have the commander there already giving orders from the back line. So if you're able to immediately take him out, then, you know, more power to you. But yeah, they're literally just rushing right in here. This is Blue 4 HQ, so this is the laptop that controls the bomb. And they're reporting that it's secure. So if that flag turns gray, by the way, that's when we know that Op 4 have defused the bomb and they have the five points from it. Well, because usually what you see in OFCRA matches is that this is a, uh, the defense faction holds the original outline objectives because those are normally the ones first assaulted. Again, this is a very unorthodox round because Ilbenek has decided to pretty much bypass everything. Now, when we see this in Friday Night Fights, it almost always blows up in the uh, attacking faction's face because they run out of time. But this is an OFCRA match. It's going to take an hour and a half which is near double what an FNF round is. So Op4 has the time to make those wider maneuvers and do this massive outflanking. So now theoretically what Op4 can just do is keep a small team at the NATO bunker to constantly guess the bomb code and send their entire force to sweep the remaining positions and defeat the NATO force in detail, considering that Op4 already has the number advantage though. So I guess that... Would that even be a defeat in detail, or would that just be a steamroll at that point? Because defeating in detail usually implies that your opponent has the superior number advantage overall, but you're engaging smaller groups to get that number advantage. I just saw those trees blink. That was a little weird. So yeah, I think they're just going to steamroll would be the proper term. So it's an interesting strat. We'll just have to see how it all plays out. Okay. Hold up. What was that about? I think they might have seen Mafo and shot at him. Because Op4 is thinking there's Blue4 guys around here. Ah, this might be the southern groups of Op4 coming up. 
and now taking fire. So it's going to cause a little bit of a standstill here. But there's no, there's no blue four around to hear those gunshots. They're literally over two clicks away. So they're not going to hear that. Now, we do have some blue four Vix heading back, though. I'm not sure if they're going to go for PC3 or if they're going to head back to the NATO position, in which case they're going to find the entire Op 4 force here. So I, I'd i be sweating a bit if you were blue four because Op 4 is in a really good opportunity just to start steamrolling. Also, mid game started a little over two and a half minutes ago. And then you still have Ilbenek down here just kind of walking around. He's trying to see if there's any blue four defenses for him to personally recon as well. But yeah, I'm sorry this match has been a little bit dull. And it sucks that, you know, it originally crashed and we had to, you know, put it on a bit of a hold. But... At the very least, this is going to be some pretty intense fighting by the Soviets to try and steamroll the rest of the blue four positions. So the bomb is nine digits. No, it's six digits. You're right. Uh, it's two from each position. So once they get one laptop, it'll show everyone on their side where those two digits go in a, a tab on the map. And then from there, they should be able to guess the remaining one with the amount of time they have. It's just, when does Blue 4 realize they've been had here? You know, when do they come around? My favorite pepper to grow. Ooh. I'm going to be honest, Drekov. Ask me again in a few years when I've grown more than uh, a few. Because I'm going to be trying a few different blends just to see which one I like the most. But these little dwarf peppers I have are really nice. But... In my back, uh, outside, I actually do have some bell peppers already growing. One of them's at least the size of my fist right now. So it's going to grow a lot bigger. All right, Op4 is sending two trucks down to start doing reconnaissance on PC3. And you're seeing more vehicles mounting up and send that way. So you're just going to start seeing that, uh, that steamroll. Hold up, they're breaking off into two different groups here. So you have a group of six, and you have a group of six with that one as well. So they've cut their engine to coast in, and then they accidentally turn their engine on to make a turn into a quick break so they could uh, bleed speed. I would say Op4 needs to keep their forces together and just steamroll the remaining positions, because if they don't, they're going to risk putting themselves in a defeat in detail position. I grew a cucumber plant years ago, and this shit spread like the plague. <laughs> Just one little plot, because uh, I wanted to... Ooh, and yeah, it did its job. That's fair. I'm going to be honest. The beans I'm growing in the back right now are freaking crazy. Like, they are climbing up a storm. So I'm only doing peas for now. And if the peas do well, I'll probably expand it to beans, because there's a few things I want to expand on. Uh, neither side have any IEDs or mines to set up ambushes with. It's more just uh, assisting vehicle support and uh, infantry from, you know, about 110 players. So the one issue with this AO is the Vix are going to be very limited in their lines of fire because of how thick of a forest this is. So the auto cannons could just bypass and start going for other positions here. We also have Op4. They're going to go up to NATO's spawn to see if they left anything, I bet. There is AI here, though. So I'm wondering if those AI will shoot at them. Because that would be pretty damn funny. There is a transport truck right here they can utilize if they want to, but... I just want to see if the AI will aggro. Doesn't look like it. Ain't that funny. 
Yeah, so these guys are fortifying over in this direction, maybe because they heard those vehicles up there. So now Blue 4 might be realizing they're in trouble. Any AI have uh, AT? They might, but I don't think the AI were reacting, so. Clueless AI. Yeah, what else is new? I don't know what Ilbanek is doing. He's going to be solo reconning, but he's got to be careful because he's Op Four's command. But I think at this point, Op Four's in a really good spot. They don't really need a lot of leadership. They just need to go take those other terminals because if they just take two, they can pull back and guess the rest. Yeah, Op4 could take the NATO Vic and drive in with it, because uh, unlike FNF, they don't have an accurate... Uh, if they check the map, they know where all friendly positions are immediately. Uh, they actually have to figure that stuff out. There's another BTR-80 coming around. Okay, that was just a bird. I thought that might have been a Hunt IR round, which are 40mm uh, rounds you fire in the air. They turn into little cameras with parachutes, and you can use them to get a bird's eye view of the AO. Oh, dear. This should be good. An EAT. Oh, we do have a Carl Gustav. Will he pull it out in time? Yeah, the Ural here did not like that hill, so they're driving around. I don't know what gave that away. They might have spotted Angel. But yeah, he's calling that out on the short range. So now we're going to potentially start seeing Blue 4 reposition to defend against the northern side. Oh, all the AI got deleted. Ha! <laughs> Means there's an admin watching from Zeus, possibly NASA or someone else, and they're just making sure the AI don't cause any issues. Dang. We can imagine if you're in a PvP event, you die to AI that aren't supposed to be there. There's probably going to be bitching, right? Can you steal opponent's gear? Uh, yes, you can't steal their radios or uniforms, though, but you can steal their guns and grenades. They try to make it fair. All right, so Blue 4 might be tracking this convoy coming around to take PC-1. Blue 4 is completely out of position, though, to defend against an Op 4 Northern push. They're still planning for a push from the south. So let's be honest. This group is going to overwhelm that defensive team and hit that position pretty quick. This team, from the looks of things, is going to be able to get around. The one caveat, though, is this LAV. If it can get into a position to... Oh, there was a bad frag over there. But if that LAV can get in a good position to hit these vehicles as they come around... They'll, they're, they're, yeah, they'll be golden. But we'll just have to see it. Uh, Blue 4 are NATO. They are the British, Netherlands, and Germans. Op 4 are purely Soviet Union. Good question. So I think these blue four guys are going to stay put because they just dug a bunch of trenches here. They can hear those BTRs moving, though. So they're looking around. These appear to be some of the uh, Germans here. Because you see that with the G3 rifles. You got a long barrel. Actually, no, it's a PSG-1, I think. Yeah, so, I mean, these guys are rocking 7.62 by 5.1. So they've got pretty heavy calibers there. Against Soviets with no body armor, that will tear them apart. Oh my god, that LAV. It is so close yet so far. Hold on. Oh, nope, they see the truck coming in. They're going to miss that one, but they might be able to hit the other two coming in as well. Unless they reposition. Oh. Hold up, but the 113 came in and just killed someone in that truck. Oh my god. The car for getting out. Always blame the cat girl vehicles. So the driver is unconscious in there, otherwise that symbol would go away. But I, I find that hilarious. All right, combat starting at. Grenade goes in. That kills him. Combat started at the 48 and a half minute mark. 
So yeah, just in time, this 113 was able to reposition because the LAV spotted those Vicks coming in. Uh, further additional Soviet reinforcements have dismounted early on. They're not going to push in now. Other trucks coming around. You got a BTR coming around. It looks like they spotted those infantry and they're firing, but we do have someone up there with a Moz. Who could hit that BTR in the back? And is that one of the auto cannon picks? Yes, it is. So why isn't Kajonovic? Oh, he's gonna try to go for a keyhole shot back here. Not a good angle to do it at, buddy. He should have been in the trees down there, just ready to step out and engage. Now you got the LAV down here though. It's turned at an angle. It could potentially hit that uh, 80 Alpha. And then otherwise you got the Op 4 infantry up here getting their butt spanked. And you have these guys pretty much camping and waiting for reinforcements here. Other truck is coming in, but the main important thing is that laptop. Please tell me the LAV noticed. It's scanning, but it wasn't tracking that Vic. There it is. Some rear hits, but the engine on this Vic is the front, but they slow down. Their engine got shot out. Oh, someone just got turned to paste in there. Big ouch. And that crew is uh, pretty much toast. They're both dead. Now, Blue 4 isn't allowed to steal those vehicles, though, once they're decrewed, which is unfortunate. That LAV might have thermals, though. So we've had two Blue 4 guys try to breach in. David was able to kill them both. <laughs> now, this is an AK-74 versus single-shot uh, FNFALs, so I am not surprised that David was able to win that fight. Now you got this other team dismounted on the southern side. You got this third truck trying to find a way around. Meanwhile, Blue 4 will push out of their position as Op 4 are pretty much taking this uh, position right here. They're going to get two of the uh, six digits they need for the bomb from that laptop. This second computer site, though, is incredibly important. You got three Blue 4 guys pulling back because of what happened there. It looks like the gunner was eventually picked off on that Vic 2. And then you still have Ilvenek slowly doing reconnaissance of site number two. I don't know, just a really great outflanking strat by Op4 here. And even though they're getting their butts kicked a little bit, it's still paying off because it's playing into uh, the overarching strategy. Blue4, meanwhile, they have reinforced this front. They're going to push for a counterattack here to try to keep this larger force pinned, which is going to make this team's job of getting to that first site all the more important. You have this other truck coming around to back them up. I think that's why they're holding right now to wait till they get that bolstered numbers. There's going to be two groups on two groups, but Blue 4 do have the LAV to support them on the outside. Meanwhile, Blue 4 are outnumbered on this group, but they can still get some significant damage in. Op 4, they do have vehicle support, but that vehicle support is going to be limited because of the thick forests here. But imagine this laptop has been interacted with. We don't see it change any uh, symbols, which is fine because uh, it gives the code via a tab in their map that they can all access. So Dawidox is pulling out on his own there. We just heard some gunshots. Uh, we saw a blue four guy get knocked out. Don't know what happened there. They're trying to medic him. I'd imagine every group does have a medic for little accidents like that. Now we're just playing the wait and see game. So other Op 4 group is entering this area. LAV still on Overwatch. Dawidox, he could be a wild card here, though. He's already gotten three kills. We'll see how much more he can stack up. So Op 4, they don't need to be here anymore. They can literally just remount and start pushing to another location. They've got a decent-sized garrison, 
and then after they complete those objectives, they can pull out. But I would assume all of these guys up here, their main job is just kill as many blue for as possible to thin them out so they don't have enough forces to overwhelm them at the NATO site. Because even if Op4 defuses the bomb, the other side can still go for a tie by eliminating almost all of them and recapturing the NATO site. That's why Op4 here needs to be really careful about how much they send. Because if they're not, they can still not win the match. It's interesting that a BTR is being left here. We got the AD Alpha mounting everyone. Shows that these guys might just go to the final objective on foot, but that is quite a bit of a walk. Maybe they'll mount up in this other BTR, which I think will have the room for them. So Blue 4, they're starting to send their forces in. Slowly starting to see Op4 push up on these positions. This is one life, yes. There have been some casualties on both sides. Not a lot, though. And we're actually going to enter late game in about 12 minutes here. And again, Pog will be at 7 o'clock, which is in two and a half hours. And then TMTM, we're going to try to play uh, late tonight. Probably have some coffee uh, before Pog, just so I can stay up for all of it. Ooh. Now the question is, will Op4 be caught in this kill zone right here? Looks like they might have spotted some of the Blue 4 guys up there, though. They're prepping vehicles just in case. Oh, excuse me, AT for the uh, M113 up there. But yeah, they're just checking these guys right now. Uh, and getting the body out of that Vic. So this is going to push them to flank left, which is going to put them in a really bad spot because the other Blue 4 Garrison's right here. Oh, gosh. Nah, no way. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, please. Someone look in that direction. Someone look in that direction. Op 4 is not even paying attention to their left flank. Oh my god. What is this? There goes a grenade. Oh. Oh my fucking god. Oh. Oh. <laughs> You're kidding. I can't make this shit up. Who was checking the left? How did you not see the skylines on this building? Are you kidding me? That was literally a squad wipe, except for one dude. Wow. How did you mess that up? Damn, absolute World War One moment right there, definitely. See, now he's trying to run, but he gets picked off by Marty there. That's a full squad wipe. So this position now just became that much harder for Op4 to take. They've mounted their remaining assault forces across two BTRs. I want to look up at Blue4 here to see if they see those Vicks going down. They might not have because of the render range and there might be a bit of a drop on that hill. So these guys are now going to probably go for site number two. Oh. <laughs> if no saying that made him horny. <laughs> God damn, poor Soviet conscripts. What was that throw? Maybe they saw Dewidox and threw a grenade, or maybe that was just a bad frag. Maybe they're trying to use the shrapnel to break the windows. I really don't know. Oh, don't worry, that's gonna be a highlight. Now if Blue Four can just recreate that magic another five times, they should be okay. And you got Dewey here. He's trying to get some more pickoffs. So he is shooting in this building. That is going to make Murdy pull back. As you can see, the bullet holes here. That gives some opportunity for this group to come in on the rear of this uh, position. Because Blue 4, I mean, they just killed a bunch of dudes. They're probably going to stay here. Yeah, they're checking the bodies going, hey, what's this stuff? This looks good. But maybe Op4 will be able to get into that position and get the terminal in time. But if they're not quick enough, Blue4 is just going to get on their ass and 
hit him from the rear, unfortunately. So as they're doing that attack, I want to track where these BTRs are going. They're dividing into two separate groups. And now we wait. So op four, they're crossing the river right now. I'm going to be honest, they probably want to pull a little closer to the right because if they go through that open field with all those infantry mounted, it's going to be bloody because a single Maz round is going to kill most of them. You also have an entrenched 113 right here. Ooh, that's going to have a really nasty overwatch on that group, but I appreciate this two-pronged attack that they're going for. They might have that other BTR come around and uh, dismount on this side. A little bit of open area to cover, but if they sandwich that small garrison, I think they'll be fine. This off four group, meanwhile, is holding. Blue four pulling back to their defensive line right there. And uh, Deweed is still running his one-man guerrilla war. Now, these groups right here still trying to track where those op four guys went. But at this rate, I mean, we're now in late game, and not a lot of PvP has happened. Um, I want to say 10% of the forces have been engaged. This is incredibly rare for an OFCRA match. Hell, I want to say, by at least 30% of matches at this point, we know who the winner is. And it looks like Deweed just got caught out and engaged by Mr. White with that uh, machine gun there. Yeah. If you saw contact was right there, you probably should have done a little more of a cautious flank around. But, oh well. Sometimes you just don't think about it. Yo, Mr. White. <laughs> Ah, uh, man. While Jesse cooks the meth, he's going to go uh, fight NATO. Uh, fight the Soviets, apparently. This is what he did beforehand. Otherwise, you got Op4 opting to cross through open fields. Yeah, so Op4 just gotten incredibly over um, confident here. We just saw one guy get picked off on the river side. Blue 4 could still just defeat the groups attacking them and then counterattack and still win this. How many codes have been covered? Uh, one out of the three. So two out of the six digits are known. But now this is going to pull Blue 4 to all look in this direction, allowing time for this Op 4 group to pin, uh, sandwich them. But we might see reinforcements come from other areas. You already see the LAV being ordered to come back around. And you've got these uh, guys right here that could also come in to assist. They'd have to have vehicles, though, to make it. So, yeah, if Op 4 gets two out of the three, I think they can guess it. But you'll probably see these guys, after they win, just go to the final site to uh, get it. Now, you got the BTR using its 7.62 to suppress up here. Now you're hearing that 14.5 millimeter. You got the uh, M113 coming around. And you got ground command for Op4 over there starting to come around as well. So you got the 50 cal spraying over here. Blue 4 commander is flipped for flat. RPG was just fired. It went over. Way over. So 113 has pulled back into a defensive position. Op 4 still pushing their forces. LAP still on the rear. Still got this Op 4 group cautiously coming up. just suppressing these buildings at this point. Uh, they have taken a few casualties go coming up. We saw one guy go down here. Another guy went down on the right side. It's slowed down a little bit because Op4 is now taking this a little more cautiously. And the computer is uh, in this building here where these two guys are. Now, it's interesting because this Op 4 group has really slowed down their pace. I'd be thinking they'd want to be a little more quick knowing that their side is covered. Another RPG fired. It was also short. Or uh, it was long. Excuse me. It went over. And yeah, Blue 4 is just reestablishing control of that site. But once Op 4 hacks the laptop, there's no point in keeping that there. Also, I do love that Op4, uh, we have all these trenches here. I think that was Blue 4 holding this position and pulling from it. Now it looks like Blue 4 
have spotted some forces over here and are starting to engage them. So that's one off four guy down. I don't understand why you got three, excuse me, five guys pushing up here and then another group all the way back here not doing anything. Uh, oh, they have an auto cannon. Oh boy. Yeah, now they're, now they're suppressing the auto cannon with the machine gun. I don't think they realize what that is because that 80 Alpha could shred them with that uh, 30 millimeter. I'm waiting for it. Now you got Ilvanek running up here as well. He's going to try to run through on his own. He's ground command, so he's allowed to do that. TK Lama trying to come up the left flank here. It could be slim, but I'm assure you uh, OFCRA does not plan that far ahead. So you are starting to see people getting knocked out up here from that 762. Is that another body up there? No, that's just his. We have an AT4 guy trying to prep, but at this range, it might be a little tough to make that shot. At this rate, I don't see Blue 4 making any attempt to reinforce this position. I think Op 4 is going to take PC number two. It's just a matter of time. Oh, but as I say that, we've got some fire going into their other side here. Gotta be a little careful about that. Op 4 continuing to push more forces up. One of their guys is caught out of position. 80 Alpha is coming up as well. I really don't understand why they're not using their main cannon. Maybe because they don't have HE rounds. Maybe because it's only uh, AP, but still. That would be some really good suppressing fire to work. There it is. There it is. That is exactly what I've been waiting for. Because that's going to make them get their fucking heads down. More shots going up here. Oh! That is the other 80 Alpha disabled. It only has one additional guy in there. So all four have lost both of their auto cannon Vicks. There's still one crewman in there that might be able to solo crew later. But now you're starting to have all four enter this town. So, I mean, they're really using that number advantage and they're losing it. But it's still getting them to where they need to be for these actual objectives. So now you're starting to have op four men get into this perimeter here and close to the actual objective itself. You got Tess up here doing medical. Oh, he's taking shots though. Or it's gonna be coming upstairs in a second. Yep. Oh. Oh my God. Okay, guys, you're dead. You can you can stop with the the limbs uh, flailing there. Whoo. <laughs> yeah, they're they're dead. Trust me. You you made sure. You literally made their head spin. All right. Fine shooting. Yeah, I don't think limbs are meant to go into pool noodles like that. But hey, you never know. Oh God, another one. Ah, oh, his gun literally made him kick his legs up. Ooh, Ilbanek. If he looks right, he can get Mickey. Ilbanek. Ilbanek, you're right. You're right. Oh my fucking God, Ilbanek. No way. Ilbanek. Ilb you're right. Il oh my freaking God. This is why I love PvP. This is, this is brilliant. That's off for ground command right there. He's trying to roll out now. You're gonna have to turn right to notice. Yes, yes, yes. He's gonna say something. That machine gun is gonna turn around and ice him. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. He just cable tied him. He just shot the other guy. <laughs> the fucking troll. The fucking troll. to take this position. It's only a matter of freaking time. They're trying their best to hold, but 
They're getting suppressed right now. Everything's going to shit. I think they hear the doors opening. There goes one. Wow, but that grenade's gonna get you. Yeah. Everyone dies! Yay! Ooh! Oh! Wait! The open exhaust gun though! Oh, he got a mid grenade throw. Marty Dom, anyone? No, I'm not gonna run up there. Wait, did that shrapnel go through? Oh, Marty Dom! The shrapnel went through and killed them both. Oh, that's brilliant. We're just having back to back highlights here, aren't we? My God. Told you, if everything gets uh, put to the end, this is what you get. So Op4 have both laptops. They might actually have the third one up here. You just had a 113 here get hit by AT. Actually, I think Op4 have won. Uh, at least the bomb objective, because you're just down to PHK in this one building holding it. Op4 have the number advantage. The other group have gone north or something. Uh, no, that's the three-man group for over there. So they were told to reposition instead. Blue four could still tie, but their other groups are getting caught out right here and eliminated. I I think it's turned around. Oh, Ilvanek, I think got blown up in that grenade explosion. Yeah, he was on three kills, but I think by now Opfor will be able to uh, get the final faint. That flag isn't gray yet. But I think on a 4v1, unless the three guys up here push in, which it doesn't look like they're going to, they'll eventually be able to kill P um, PHK and take that final terminal. Nope, bomb has been defused. So, uh, yep, so that turned gray. Okay. Wow. So Op4 have gained five points for defusing the bomb. Now, the only way Blue 4 can tie is if they knock Op4 down to five or less people so they don't get the two points for the supremacy bonus on their side, and they have control of the final NATO terminal, which it looks like they're going to send some groups up to attempt to do that, but Op4 has a pretty good garrison up there. But even then, they'd have to hunt Op4 down to get them to five or less players, so it's unlikely they're going to win. Tariq, were you the guy that got cable tied by Ilvanek? Were you one of these two? Because we, yeah, yeah, I know, buddy. Dude, it took him forever to notice you were there, though, because he literally went around you, went right here, and then went around this bush and then noticed you. It was... Okay, yeah, you were the MG guy in the corner, gotcha. But it was so funny watching Ilvanek go up there because he didn't notice you until he needed to go around a bush. Then he noticed you. That was the funny part about it. All right, we got my buddy Nick up here. We got Llama coming up. Yeah, there's that little corner that he wasn't uh, covering, so that gave Llama a second to breathe and then find an angle to hit him. Ooh. Lama's gonna follow it up with a grenade as long as I can kill himself with it. And we got an unconscious guy up here, which I think Lama will double tap. He's being incredibly cautious coming up here, though. There it is. All right, so meanwhile, we got off for uh, slowly trying to counterattack this position. But now that their objective's done, they're in a bit of a shambles here, so they'll fight and kill off those remaining guys. Looks like they were able to kill PHK up there and take the third site. Now they're trying to pull back. Now as Blue Force sends those three guys down, and then Blue Force is mounting up to uh, make this final attack here, which, granted, Op4 doesn't have a lot of guys. They just have uh, BTRs overwatching. Oh, I completely forgot, though. Blue Force still has their LAV with the auto cannon. So we'll see if that's uh, useful at all. They're just doing some large scale suppression though, but that crossfire is landing on blue four troops as well. Are you trying to pick off? Please shoot him. 
Just, just fucking shoot them. Just laugh and go, ha, here's mine, and then just eliminate them with 14.5 millimeter. Yeah, so one of these guys went down, the other one's crawling around. <sighs> right. I mean, if anything, this op has shown the need for having some rear security on the objective so you don't get back out. TK Llama getting launched back. You know, speaking of which, what's our time check? We have 18 minutes remaining. That's enough time for Blue Ford to potentially retake this site. However, let's have a look up here. So, uh, Rise William got knocked out. Blue Ford's starting to smoke their advance. Off is a pretty small garrison here. We do have a Dragunov marksman up here, but we're starting to see smokes go in the way. So he's not going to be able to keep those angles of fire, and you got the BTRs coming around to provide overwatching support. So you have Blue Force starting to prep their AT here. Now you got the BTR starting to fire as well. Williams walk back up. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's give him a warm welcome, shall we? And I don't think Op4 has any reinforcements to call because all other groups are pinned in previous areas. Maybe this group of four will get in the truck and come back around. I'm a little worried about Op4 right now because they could still... Uh, lose their superior um, numbers uh, pointage there. But Blue Four also has to maintain theirs, and that's where this could get a little messy. I think between units that are outside the AO and the uh, LAV crews, they're fine. But Op Four, I mean, they should be mounting up their forces and just pulling back to this final NATO position. Just to hold it, because as long as they hold it, they win. They don't have to worry about nullifying Blue Force numbers. I don't know, Op4 with two BTRs on overwatching positions. A handful of infantry. I think Blue4 could bounce this back because of the limitations of the Op4's uh, BTR's line of sight. If Blue4 can get some good outflanks here, but only if they can get those outflanks. First AT is launched. That cooks off the first BTR. Not surprised with that. That BTR was pushing in enemy territory there and got taken out. That just wasn't a good call to make. This other BTR is heeding that warning, though. They're pulling back. They're trying to get a good cone of uh, fire here so they can see more as it happens. So you got Sixor running off with that Vic and Aja alone in that BTR. I don't know what they're doing, leaving all those infantry behind. But I think Blue Forum might have a good opportunity to retake this position. But if Op4 has five or more players left alive by the end of the round, they still win by default. I don't think either side of engineers, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. As long as there's five plus Op4 alive over the next 10 minutes. Or, wait. No, I miscounted. 20 minutes. Sorry, when I said 28, I think I meant to say... Um, or when I said 18, I meant 28. As we counted up to 38. So there's still 20 minutes in the round. My bad. Completely miscalculated that. So still a lot of room for Op4 to get hunted down here. You've got these guys over here. I don't know. I think we're going to see the rounds start to sizzle out because Op 4 might just, you know, go off in a corner somewhere and that's it. As long as they have six dudes or five dudes, that's it. Wow. So here they are quickly hovering over the wall. Dave calling up to say, hey, that wasn't a good idea. Good Overwatch positions by Op4 here, being in that bunker. They got a PKM and an SVD, so they're just using a lot of their heavy weapons here. Oh, that's a grenade. Thankfully, uh, it was an angle. It was at an angle where uh, Alpha Male did not get hurt there. David now pulling back. And another dude getting picked off. Maybe because he stood to try to get his gun over and got immediately suppressed. Oh. 
I think an op four and a blue four guy just traded there. I don't see David anymore. But I don't see that blue four guy. So that's one of the British guys. And here's the yep, body there. So there's the 20-minute call. So it's actually going to be closer to the 40-minute uh, mark there. Uh, Grenadiers would be pretty good. Oh, Marksman pickoff on Williams there. He could wake back up, but he already got knocked out once, so it's unlikely he'll wake up a second time. Uh, yeah, you're seeing everyone kind of remounting here to push forces back to the final objective. I'm just curious what these guys have because they had the BTR. So maybe they'll be able to get into radio comms with a vehicle to pull them back. Otherwise, they're just going to be completely out of position here, which is a blessing in disguise because Op4 just needs one extra person in the AO to live for them to get that advantage. And maybe Sixor will come back and pick him up. He's just chilling in the driver's seat. So yeah, Blue 4, they've lost, I want to say, 40% of their forces coming up to this position. They're going to continue to lose a bit more now that they're going to the more open territory that that BTR can help lock down. Dave trying to come around. Gets suppressed. Shots going on Sky Online as he comes in. Wait. Sky Online throwing a grenade over the wall to immediately clear anything behind it. Now he's going to vault. Gets spotted by Alf. Oh, Sky picks the worst time to turn away. And he gets picked off. He thought it was safe because Alf was behind the Hesco, but Alf knew there was something coming. Got some blue four trying to flank around. The Overwatch element is under fire here. The marksman got picked off. The machine gunner's still up and kicking, though. They need more infantry to come back ASAP. You've got four coming back in a BTR. And four coming in a transport truck, but they're both about two minutes away. This one, two minutes. That one, a minute, actually. And you got these guys on foot coming back. I want to see the LAV coming to the AO, though. But it's got... Five people loaded. I think it's got a three-person crew. No, it's a two-person crew. So that would be four people loaded. So Blue Four just has a lot to throw, and you got Six Or moving in on his own as well. And then Blue Four Command still staying there. And then these three guys still over here. Uh, they can mount up in this Euro though and get out of here because I don't think that engine ever got shot out. So they're not out of the fight yet. Blue Four, I would say, has a number advantage over Op Four, but Op Four are just better suited right now. Now, another break. Yeah, the Ural coming around would be good, but that BTR is doing a great job of overwatching from the rear. So if there is a wide outflank and the BTR hears that Ural come in, then uh, they're kind of screwed. Yeah, GG, it's not for everyone, but it can be quite enjoyable just to watch everyone just kill each other, at least in my opinion. Another hydrate, you got it. I will say, though, this round has definitely been one of the more slow ones. Usually OFCRA has more action in the mid-game, and it fizzles out in the late game. This case, too, but very brief bouts of contact. Dave, I think, might see Monica there. Here's what I'll do. Oh, he sees him. Yep. Shoot him. He's switching to a grenade. Yep. Gonna see if we can pick him off with that. Yeah. Nasty. He's gonna run. We might see Alf get another kill here as he turns out to watch that wall. Now you got that BTR coming in. 
dismounting some of its troops as well. They're going to come and flank the rear. That uh, truck's coming up. Alf, I think, just picked off the machine gunner overwatching over here. Yep. Mm, the BTR did not react to that truck. I guess they just didn't hear it. Oh, and a great headshot by Roy DeCamper. And now Blue Four is going to have control of the small NATO base here. So yeah, the only Op 4 force now in the AO is that BTR. You've got another BTR and three additional infantrymen coming up on the rear. You have six or in the 113, and you got four guys in the Ural over yonder. And then these four guys trying to come in. Roughly 15 minutes remaining. I will be streaming Pog Zeusing at 7. Uh, Pog is the name of a community, not uh, the freaking face. <laughs> and then I'll be trying to play TMTM on the ground at 10. Maybe I'll have a late night stream where I'll show you guys the new computer I'm building uh, and then show you what's going on in the greenhouses. Does Op4 so know if they'll win if they just run? Um, yeah, but these people are here to kill each other, so they probably wouldn't do something like that. The server didn't crash a second time. I know, PH. It's wonderful. Ooh, so these guys might run up the border here and take out the BTR. Do they have any AT? Uh, no. No, they do not have any AT. Okay, this should be interesting. They can steal the wheels. Wheel stealing will be a thing. What are you getting out for? Oh, I guess to switch from commander to driver. Engine's going on. Oh my god. Oh my god. No! The gunner didn't notice. Wait, did he? Oh, <laughs> oh my god. What in tarnation. And now in European time, in two hours we'll have another stream. In five hours, we'll have another stream. There you go. Ah, oh, now they're stuck on a rock. More blue four coming up. I don't see any AT on them. I, oh, no, there's light anti tank on Rigel, and he will make that shot. But they're taking fire from the rear as Op 4 pushes up on their position. This has caused a lot of blue four guys to leave this position, only leaving Royd here with a Maz. RPG just blindly fired up there. I, maybe they were trying to hit the perimeter. I don't know. But yeah, everyone's going for this BTR that's now backing into the forest here. And that's allowing Op4 room to actually push back into that sector. There's more AT that was fired. That might have been Royd's Maz on that other BTR. Uh, no, that was more AT firing to take out this stat. Oh, wow. That is a large chunk of the base destroyed. Anard firing more AT in these defensive positions as he pushes. I don't see Royd alive anymore, so I assume he was taken out. Oh, Rigel's going to lat this thing for sure. Clear back blast. Rocket, rocket. And they're dead. Yippee. Whew. Ro uh, oh, Roy died when the antenna collapsed. I thought it was outside of the area, but I guess he ran back in or something. But either way. Blue 4 now have all of their remaining forces, minus the four guys on the ground, coming in. So this is scary, though, because if every Op 4 guy up here dies, then there will be a tie game, in which case I'll refund everyone's points. And 113 goes super wide. <laughs> yeah, so they're double-tap, but now Op 4 has control of the sector again. Blue 4 has to regain control, and they've done a far dismount up here for whatever reason. I guess they'll grab the rest of their guys with the LAV. And you got these guys, they've, I think, grabbed a 113, and they're going to be trailing in as well. Time wise, about 10 minutes left. Ash now getting suppressed by Baku. Oh, is that BTR up? The driver, I think, woke back up, and he's trying to drive away. Oh, that's hilarious. Ooh, 
marksman shot just picked off someone up here. Is that Rigel? Nope. Rigel's over there, so it was one of the uh, original four over here. And now they're running up to where the marksman's line of fire is. Oh, Calc's trying to friendly wiggle. Not realizing that Opfor's retaken that position. Oh. I think that might have confused the marksman, though. Because now he's not shooting, but now there's going to be smoke obscuring them. Oh, my God. Intel's a bitch, ain't it? They haven't realized that Opfor's retaken that position. Now I got the BTR smoking. This is the line for Blue for to get close, but there Rigel goes, getting taken out by Nanner there. And he got a friendly 113 coming in by six or but that might get friendly AT by uh off four red on red by Kuwait, for example. Unless they know that that's friendly. Hit him with the psyops, yeah, right. Kill him with friendship. Oh my god, it's the My Little Pony Ops all over again. Wombat trying to fire over that area. BTR trying to line up a shot. Ash also engaging with that uh, GPMG. But the bigger caliber is going to reign supreme with that 14.5mm. Then 6 or could flank with that 113. Right on that call. I'll take a look at it when I can. Great pick off by Mr. Dave there. He killed someone in a porta potty. That seems like a shitty way to die. <laughs> My jokes are shit. I know. What the BTR doing? I think that's only going to work because Blue Force is out of AT. And you got six or up here on the 113 looking around. So yeah, eight minutes. I don't... I don't know. Oh. No! No, don't play with your food! Dave, I think, knows! Oh! God! Damn! Ooh. Talk about being blown away in the bad way. More AT being fired up. Blue four down to four, down to three, because six sword picked off that dude with the one one threes fifty. Oh, uh, now the vehicles are just bullying. There's another VTR over here that's gonna... <laughs> My God. What a way to go. Protect me, Grass! Yeah, Grass doesn't stop bullets, unfortunately. I think Op4 has it. Blue 4 out here. There's less than six minutes remaining. Send in Billy Cheesesteak. Thanks so much for Twitch Prime sub. I hope you keep enjoying the operations. I do hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. Camo net just got knocked out. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in a little under two hours for Pog. Feel free to watch the cleanup, but I'm pretty sure this is an op for victory. So weed, what do you got? You got a fucking G3. 50 cows trying to poke Zebra off. Oh, infantryman coming in. Oh, I know the LAV is really OP, but I don't know what they've done with it because I don't see it anywhere. When the blue four guys eat shit, yes, they did. We're down to two. Zebra. 
Oh God, zebra. that just showed on the camo net. Oh, the humanity. It's over. Five minutes for these guys to get up there? Maybe at the three or four minute mark, it's over. So what happened to the LAV? Why did it get dismounted? Uh, That's why they waited so long. They armored themselves on a 113. They're acing the hole, wasted. Wow. Excellent. I'm not surprised. Damn. It's GG. I mean, both the 80 Alphas on Op4 got picked off pretty easily, but the fucking LAV getting Arma, that really takes the damn cake, doesn't it? Oh, man. Look, you got you got infantry running up here. What does Barrows have? That's brilliant. That is just absolutely brilliant. Will he make it up here in time to uh, hit him with a GL or something or kill the gunner? Or he's going to slow down. Nah. Bye, Felicia. Three minutes remaining. Nah. Oh, wait. Wait. Blue 4 have a car. Hold on. Wait a minute. Guys, I don't think you have the time to even dismount on the outside. David's sneaking in. Hold up, guys. We could see a clutch. We won't, but I'm trying to hype you up. Will Blue 4 find the way into the AO? It's not working? I know. I know. But you know what? I am trying my best. Okay. Oh, there we go. You're firing. What is up with all the people firing at B? Oh, wait, no. It's because he just killed that dude. And then Val just killed that dude. AT! Misses! And Baku coming up. Here comes the 113 in the nick of time. If only if Baku had AT to deal with it. He does. I don't know why he's just like running back. Baku, AT, go. Like Baku gone or some shit. I don't fucking know. Do it. AT. What are you? AT. Oh, that's brilliant. Did he just realize he had AT? Yes, he did. Satchel charges in that Vic that just exploded. Oh. 
Oh my god. It's over. There we go. Yeah, 10 points to none. It's GG. Well, guys, next stream will be in an hour and a half. Thank you so much for watching. Go operate operationally. Enjoy the rest of your day or night. Hope you enjoyed this match despite it being rather slow. Otherwise, cheers and have a good one.